Good afternoon, Beckman Catholic families and parents. Um, I'm trying a little bit of a different approach with some updates on the current things with COVID-19 today uh, to use a little bit of some distance education tools to show you some of the things that, uh, if we're allowed to do that, what these things might look like. So today's uh, update on this is gonna be a little bit of video with some PowerPoint slides, um, just so that you've got some information instead of just having to read it um, through an email. So I'm not scripted on any of this, so it's gonna be somewhat free flowing, but I thought this might be a good way to get you some information that you're going to have. So what I'd like to go through with you today, um, just as a little bit about where things are currently from the information that we have on a statewide basis and then kind of what our, our current response plans are, you're most likely aware that uh, this is fluid and it's most likely subject to change as we go. Um, we're getting updates pr pretty much two to three times a day. So the things that I'm sharing are, are valid as of about noon, one o'clock this afternoon on Sunday. So just a little bit about what's happening in Iowa. Uh, as of last night, the governor had a press conference around 8.30 um, that increased the total cases in Iowa to 18. It's only one more than it was on Friday, but the difference right now um, from, from Friday to Saturday is the latest case that was found in Dallas County um, is a confirmation of what's called community spread. And when I sent out the email updates on Friday, I had mentioned that community spread was something that we needed to look for. So I am not an epidemiologist and don't want to pretend to be one. Um, but from the reading and the information that I've received and read and also uh, in our consultations with local public health officials, community spread just means that they can't necessarily determine particularly where someone has gotten infected. Uh, so all previous cases in Iowa that have been up to this time were related to travel um, with the Egyptian cruise that was out there um, or the individual who traveled to the state of California. This individual did not travel anywhere else, so this is where that spread has occurred. And as a result, the recommendations that occur from public health officials change as a result. So the biggest thing that happened last night with that is that the governor's ordered that events over the size of 250 people are not allowed to occur. Um, and as of this afternoon, uh, currently schools in Iowa are still in session following the guidance from public health. So at this point, we do intend to have school tomorrow with a few changes that I'll outline for you here um, as we go through this this afternoon. Um, so current plans that we have based on the situation are first off, I know a lot of people are wondering what's happening with the musical. Uh, with those recommendations of not having crowds of more than 250 people, obviously the auditorium holds much more than that. So we are postponing um, the musical at this point um, to a time to be yet to be determined. We have to work some things out with the licensing company who we have Beauty and the Beast from in terms of dates. We need to look at school calendars. Um, we also are trying to watch to see that we pick some dates where we think that the musical can happen. We don't wanna uh, reschedule quickly and then have to postpone a second time. So we're gonna work on some of those things here in the upcoming days and as soon as we have some new dates out, we will share that information. We'll also work through if tickets uh, need to be refunded or exchanged as a result of that and how we're gonna handle that. So lots of details to work out and as we work those out, we'll communicate that information. We are also scheduled to have an intruder drill next week. <clears throat> So that has been postponed um, with the idea of not having people in close proximity to each other and trying to work on the concept of social distancing. We're gonna postpone that uh, until later. We've also decided that uh, we were going to take the ISAFs test at the end of April, or sorry, the end of March and the beginning of April. Until we have some more certainty about what's going on, we're gonna postpone those at this time. Um, and we will make sure that if those need to be taken, we do those within the recommended testing window. Beginning tomorrow as well, we're going to have a modified schedule that'll allow for additional passing time. Um, we're gonna move from our three minute passing to six minute passing, but we will alternate groups in the hallway at three minute intervals. So we'll have seventh, ninth, and 11th graders move to classes within a three minute window. And then we'll have 10th, eighth, 10th, and 12th graders move as well within a window within that six minutes. To do that, we're going to temporarily suspend blazer time to allow for this schedule change. Uh, this is something that's being recommended by the Centers for Disease Control. Um, of alternating folks that are in the hallway. Um, we are going to at this time still hold the MIME performance tomorrow night at 5.30 for those junior high students since we are canceling the musical and the sixth grade retreat that was scheduled for later this week. Um, the event seems to be within the parameters at this point. We do not have any confirmed cases of COVID-19 in our area, so we're not having community spread at this point. If that were to change within the next 12 to 24 to 36 hours, we'll make modifications. Um, but we feel that we can have that event at this time within a 250 uh, 
total of people coming. We're also having that in the competition gym, which allows people to spread out while they watch that and students to spread out as well on the floor. We're going to be reviewing upcoming field trips and events to determine whether or not students may attend. We'll do this on a case by case basis. Things that'll come into play is how many students are attending, how many people are total supposed to be there, and we'll also receive guidance from public health officials locally as to what, what's going to be allowed and not be allowed. The best thing I can say, or the, the most challenging thing I guess in a way I can say is that we're making these decisions um, in this situation case by case, hour by hour. I'm receiving updates from our Archdiocesan Office of Catholic Schools a couple times a day. We get additional information from the Iowa Department of Education. We get information from public health officials um, multiple times. And so um, advice we have right now and recommendations we have right now can change within the hour or change within the, within the, the couple of hours or days. So we ask that you stay, stick with us, hang with us as we work through all this together. So I wanted to share a little bit too about some prevention measures. So what are things that people can do to help stop the spread of, of COVID-19? So some simple things that, that you can do, first off, are just washing your hands frequently with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. Uh, the Our Father takes you about 20 seconds to say, so that's a good way to do that if you're wondering how long it needs to be. Obviously, if you don't have soap and water, continue to use hand sanitizer as well. Um, viruses with, with, of which this is, um, tend to enter your, your body through your eyes, your nose, and your mouth. So the more that you can keep your hands away from those areas, the less likely you are to, to spread the virus. The big thing is, is to please stay home if you are ill. If anybody has a fever in particular of over 100.4, you should not be out and about. That's, that's a key sign. If we have students coming to school with a fever at this point, we will send you home. Um, that's, if I can't stress anything else today, please, if people are sick, please stay home. That's the best way to stop, stop illnesses from spreading. Um, cover your cough, avoid close contact with people who are ill, and then clean and disinfect touched, frequently touched objects and surfaces. We've been doing that already here at school for the last couple of weeks. We've been using Clorox wipes and other disinfectants to wipe down areas, um, and we'll continue to do that as school is in session as well. So a question that might be uh, in your mind is what if I'm not comfortable sending my kids to school right now with what's going on out there? Uh, we will work with you if you're uncomfortable with having your kids in the building at this time. Uh, we will work to send home school materials so that you can, can, kids can continue to work on items. If you have those questions, reach out to us and we will make arrangements as best we can. Uh, what if school becomes canceled is another one. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to happen at this point in time. Uh, if we look at surrounding states and circumstances, there is the potential for that to happen. What we don't know at this point in time is how days would be made up and if remote or distance learning options will be allowed. So we are working on having plans for options in the event those are deemed allowable. So that's why I'm using something like this today because this is one method that potentially some of our staff might be able to have a lesson or something where you could watch a video and then be able to do some work on your own at home. Other things that you can do, obviously keep everyone impacted by this situation in your prayers. Contact us if you have questions or concerns uh, and continue to watch for updates and changes to these plans because the thing that's uh, becoming pretty pr predictable right now is the only thing we can expect is to have more change. If you're looking for information from uh, additional sources, Updates uh, are posted regularly and frequently on the Iowa Department of Public Health's website, which is listed here below, um, and as well as the federal website at coronavirus.gov. So those are two good resources to look for information. Um, I have been working with pu local public health since Wednesday of last week. I'll be attending a meeting uh, tomorrow afternoon with them to get additional updates, um, and those things will continue to keep us updated as well and uh, helping us to modify our plans and to adjust plans based on the information that we're receiving. So appreciate your patience and understanding as we work through this. Um, I mentioned to my kids last night as we were uh, talking about the situation that for them, this is probably a 9-11 type of event for my generation. Um, that was kind of a defining event where, th where things had changed and there was some um, challenges and difficulties that we worked through as a nation. Obviously, this is a similar situation that um, 20 years from now, we'll be able to tell, they'll be able to tell their children or, or we'll be able to tell grandchildren about the things that happened with this. So uh, again, we appreciate your patience, your understanding, 
please reach out if you have questions or concerns. Uh, as we have more information, we'll be continue to share information through uh, school messenger and other means as we have as well. Thank you very much.